We're here at JB Industries today to talk about our new LD5000 Prowler leak detector. Let's start out by explaining what comes with the unit when you purchase it. Along with the unit itself, it comes with a very rugged carrying case with a custom foam cut mold. It comes with batteries, regular alkaline batteries, as the battery life is so long, rechargeable batteries aren't necessary. It comes with a replacement filter package. Replacement filters have to be replaced about every two to three months based on use. You could visually look at it and see if they're dirty and replace them. It also comes with a leak test vial, which is very important. If you're questioning whether the leak detector is working properly or not, you can use the test vial to test and ensure that it is. It also comes with a very detailed instruction set. It's instruction on how to use your leak detector. Now let's discuss some of the features of the LD5000 Prowler from JB Industries. First of all, I'd like to point out the overmolded handles, both top and bottom, which provides a terrific grip, even if your hands are a little bit oily. As you can see with the LD5000, it has a very robust design. We use screws with metal inserts instead of plastic tabs on the battery cover and also to hold the unit together. This makes for a very strong, long-lasting unit. The sensor life is estimated at a 10 years or more. I mean, this is very important for those of you that have used leak detectors in the past. If you oversaturated or poisoned your leak detector sensor, you'd have to run out and buy a new one, which could be $100 or more. The 10-year sensor life on the LD5000 is a terrific benefit. The LD5000 is, is highly sensitive to all HFCs, HCFCs, including 410A, 407C, 404A, even works with newer refrigerants coming out, such as 1234YF. It's also designed to be safe in combustible areas. Now let's take a closer look at the LD5000 Prowler leak detector. We must first, of course, start by turning the unit on. Simple press button, on, off button. Now you'll hear the audible beeps, which we can disengage by hitting the mute button. You'll see the bars are counting up. The unit is not ready to use until it's fully warmed up. The bars will count up until it gets 10 full bars. Then it will indicate the sensitivity level and the battery indicator. At this point, the unit is ready to use. It normally takes about 30 to 45 seconds to boot up or warm up. If the unit hasn't been used in a while, it may take up to a minute. If it's been used recently, it may take as little as 20 seconds. You can see now that the unit is ready to be used. We have a medium sensitivity level, which is the factory standard, but we can simply change that by hitting the sensitivity button. Now we're at high, low, and back to medium. We have a full battery indicator, so batteries aren't a problem. It has an adjustable angle, so if we're reaching in hard spot areas, you can angle the graph so it's still visible. The third button is a red icon, which looks like a, a cell phone mute button, and that's simply what it is. If you can turn the audible alarm off by simply pressing the button once, press it again, and the alarm will sound again. You also might find yourself in an environment where you just don't want to bother someone next to you. You can turn the mute on. You still have the visual display, but you also have the vibrating handle, a very unique feature to JB's Prowler unit. The fourth panel button Again, very intuitive, is a bright yellow, looks like a light, and that simply turns the backlight on and off. And this comes in very handy if you're in a dark environment, you can't see the display, you want to see the size of your lake, you simply turn the backlight on, another button to turn off. Now I'll spend a few minutes demonstrating how to use the LD5000 Prowler from JB Industries. The unit generally takes about 30 to 45 seconds to warm up. If it hasn't been used in a while, it may take up to a minute. If it's been used recently, it may take as little as 25 seconds. It's very important to let the unit warm up or boot up in a clean or fresh environment. If you boot up or warm up in a contaminated environment, that becomes the unit's ambient. In other words, the unit is always searching for a heavier concentration of refrigerant gas. If it boots up in a heavy concentration of gas, it may not alarm because it's searching for additional concentration. The reason the unit works that way is to help pinpoint a leak. So you warm the unit up in a clean environment, you walk into a, a leak area, 
It detects a small amount of refrigerant gas. It alarms, vibrates, and displays the graph. It then resets itself to that ambient. So it won't alarm unless it finds more gas. So it draws you closer and closer to a heavier concentration of gas, which of course is your leak source. Every LD5000 comes with its own test file. And this is very important to ensure that your unit is working properly. There's a sticker atop every test file. A lot of people just want to unscrew the test file, but that's the, not the proper technique. You will get a reading, but the test file has a sticker in a tiny hole. This replicates a smaller leak than if you took the entire cap off. Simply turn your leak detector on, let it warm up. This one's already been warmed up. Simply hold the tip toward the test file, and you should get about three to four bars reading. This unit is working properly. What we have here in uh, one of our JB laboratories is a calibrated leak or a standard leak. Um, it's very expensive, and this one is set to 0 0.05 ounces per year. I know a lot of people, when they buy their leak detectors, they open a can of gas, and they, they have all different methods for testing their leak detector. Using a standard calibrated leak is the best, although I know they're not generally available out there. That's why we include our test vial in, uh, in the case. But we do have standard calibrated leaks here to meet uh, the strict standards that we designed to. So let me demonstrate with a calibrated leak how to use the leak detector. First, let me remove the cap. Okay, again, we have a, a 0 0.05 ounce a year leak. And I'm gonna use what we call the sweeping or pendulum method where you start searching for your leak, and I'll turn the audible alarm on so you can hear. You never wanna go more than three inches per second. If, you, if you're going back and forth like this, you're never gonna detect a leak. So you wanna go you know, fairly slow, Well, you detected something, but I'm continuing to go by. Now I start going back the other way. A little slower, because I know the leak's somewhere that side of me. An additional alarm. You can see, each time I'm going back, a little less past it and a little slower. There's a leak. Go back the other way, even slower. And you can pinpoint the leak. So you can see, it's kind of a back and forth, but slower. And each time, like a pendulum, I'm getting narrow, narrow, narrow until I pinpoint that leak. One common mistake and one thing I never want you to do is to use and just open up a, a can of refrigerant to your leak detector. I mean, other than environmental concerns, this will reset itself to ambient. And if it's ambient is a flushing jet stream of refrigerant, it's never going to alarm because it could never detect anything in a heavier concentration than that. So if you want to put a cap on, open, close, take the cap off, that's acceptable, but never expose your leak detector to an open can of gas. One, it will mislead you into thinking the unit's not working. It will also saturate your sensor. Again, with the JB unit, at least we can hold it away, go into a clean environment for a while, and it will correct itself. And simply put a cap on it, open it up, close it, take your cap off, run the leak detector by your cap. Okay, and that will alarm until the refrigerant wears off. The LD5000 is highly sensitive, very intuitive unit to use. 